talk to everyone about Channel 4's involvement with Ron from the beginning. We uh, put all our minds together, like myself, Marlon, uh, John, who we co-created it with, and then um, Adam Dolman, so Jonathan Pearson, uh, Adam Dolman, uh, who was our producer, and you know, put in the lion's share as well. And, uh, we shot this pilot, wrote and shot it, um, and then Jamie the Cruz, who did Exit Through the Gift Shop, or he had just come off of that, or, or, or it was around about that, I think it was just before the It was just before, yeah. It's got, um, we, we'd spoken to, to Jamie before about the project, we'd mm. spoken to a couple of people, and everyone was kind of interested in it, but they didn't really know how to position it, and you know, what we were pitching, we were pitching you know, very sh kind of short half hour, um, basically, you had a series in half hour, you know, there was four episodes, they were like eight minutes each, mm. um, and everyone was kind of excited by it, but they were a bit afraid of it as well, because they just didn't, you know, how do we do this kind of thing. Um, so we just decided, this is this is going to make it, you know, uh, regardless of what anyone's saying. Um, and there were a couple of people that were trying to advise us, well, don't do that. It was like, you know, wait, 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 wait. Um, but Jamie was very, very enthusiastic about it. I mean, he kind of always wanted to be involved. And um, he was just about to start Exit Through the Gift Shop. And he said, if you guys can wait for me to finish Exit Through the Gift Shop, because it's going to be big, you know, it happens. I'll have some kind of, I'll have some kudos to get into rooms with certain people. Um, and then, yeah, he came, he, you know, it was a massive success. And we got our first meeting at Channel 4 um, with a guy called Robert Wolf Cochran. Um, and that was really the first kind of development meeting that we, we had. Uh, so uh, we were like, okay, well, we've got uh, this uh, scene uh, in the first episode where they attack uh, Polish guys, so um, why don't we make that uh, the catalyst um, for a chain reaction? And we, what the show is really about is, uh, you know, the ramifications of this act and how it's uh, affecting other people. And you know, every act, action has a reaction. Um, and then that sat quite well with what we always wanted to do, which was tell stories of you know seldom seen people and how we all touch each other. Uh, each other's life in some way, shape, or form. Each character, whilst you know we had that kind of murder mystery kind of thing bubbling in the background, each character had their own kind of personal story, mm -hmm. their own personal thing that they wanted to, you know, achieve. Well, mm -hmm. Looking back, if you were to put a number in terms of proportion and ratio, how much of it was Channel Four saying this is how it's going to be, and how much of it was you saying this is how it's going to be? If you were a writer who was coming into an already established show, then maybe someone would say, this is how it's got to be, because we have an established show here. Or even if it's the first series of a show and you're just doing like the middle episodes, you know, you, there's only so much freedom you can have because a, a template has been set um, and you have to work within that parameter, those parameters. Uh, but uh, if, you, if you're lucky enough to do your own show, then no or at least not in our very short experience, uh, I don't think anyone would say this is how it should be. I think it's more, um, you know, we like what you're doing and we think this is a way to make it better. We were, we were writing it, aiming for it to be on at around 11 o'clock, half hours, and it was very, they, they were very dark. They were very, very dark. And um, Jay Hunt, who's in Channel 4, once she read those scripts, she was like, I love this. Is there any way it can be a 10 o'clock show? And the moment it becomes a 10 o'clock show, it's, it just, you know, everything changes. Um, and some of those things that were in there, some of the language and so on, you do have to slightly, yeah, I think, tone it, tone it down. Yeah, because just because of broadcasting rules. Yeah. And or, like, you know, the, the just the kind of shows that you get at that time. Uh, uh, and there was one uh, big uh, compromise we had to make because we did move to the 10 p.m. slot, uh, or at least we accepted the offer uh, uh, to, to, to move to that slot. We originally had five stories, uh, all half hours, uh, and there was one story in there that was about a um, uh, Somali brother and sister, and the brother uh, discovers that his sister is about to be um, circumcised, uh, and it's all happening in secret, and he has to try and stop it. But this was like a, a long time ago, like in uh, around about 2011 slash 12, um, and so no one in TV had really done anything to the extent that we wanted to do. Yeah, now, now it's like some casualty and all this stuff. 
Yeah, I mean, like, uh, so, which is like really like a, a killer. But but then you know this is like uh, <laughs> this is part of the process. You know, like, mm. it, it was either you know stick to our guns and and still have the you know the, the half hours that they'll go out at like a, a time when everyone's going to bed and no one's really going to watch it, and uh, or or you know you could have more time. So you know you know almost an hour. And yeah, see, more people watching sure. it, but also that also meant that when you went to go and cast, uh, you could get like uh, maybe higher caliber of actors because they would want to be in the, like you know ten pin chunk or drama because we hadn't done anything. They weren't going to come because of us. They were going to come, you know, maybe because you know, uh, you know, so it could, it could, it has a potential to be a big show. So yeah, we uh, so we had five, but then because it was going up to ten, uh, Jay requested that it would be cut down to four. And specifically requested that we cut out the, the story about general uh, female general mutilation, and so that was uh, a big kind of uh, compromise, I guess, we had to make. Really, and, and we grieved a lot because we, you know, we we were very close to that story for a long time. We researched it very heavily, uh, and you know, done countless drafts, and it'd been with us from yeah about 2007, and yeah, so. Around 2012, we had to say goodbye to it, like forever. A very particular aspect of screenwriting, uh, uh, if you ever get to go into production, is uh, we were in the, we we're just about to start shooting the first episode when when this was uh, being mooted, or at least it was uh, it was fast approaching. So uh, we kind of just had two episodes. Right? So we've gone from five to just two, uh, and they're like, okay, well, you need like two more, and. One of the stories in the five, we took some elements of it, but then we had to kind of make a brand, a brand new one up, and we had to do it in like uh, it's like three weeks. Yeah, yeah, it was really an yeah, incredibly short amount of time. Uh, so that's three weeks to come up with a story, pitch it to Channel Four, uh, or you know, let's come up with a story within our you know our team that we were working with, um, uh, and then get on the same page, pitch that to Channel Four. They give you notes on on the idea. You go back. Come, come back with the with the new and improved pitch uh, based on their notes. Uh, and suppose, then, suppose you had a writer's block in those three weeks. What would have happened? Uh, I don't think that exists. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't think we've ever experienced it. I shouldn't say business exists. That's a very bad thing to say because it, it is a real thing for. for I think when you're like but, in like a pressurized situation like that, mm -hmm. the adrenaline is just, just yeah. getting through. You know, it's kind of like there's so much at stake around that time. It was just like, yeah, it was just wasn't an option to think about. It wasn't even kind of like an option. You know? Before we got to, you know, make run, and we were writing in our own time, you, know, you kind of had all the time in the world, so you could procrastinate and you could really, you know, sometimes we we would block time away from the, you know the day jobs to to write, but then you'd end up surfing the internet and then <laughs> three hours of going and. And you know, I didn't really do any writing today, but I do it tomorrow type thing. And I think when someone says, uh, basically, if you don't do this, you're fucked. Yeah. And you're like, okay, all right. It kind of it sticks, uh, you know, kind of firecracker up your arts, and you've got to, you just got to do it. And I think um, that can produce good work. You know? A lot of you are going to have projects and, and, and stuff that you want to pitch to different companies and different production companies and so on. I think it's really important the experience we've had since one as well. You know, whatever you've come up with, you know, if it's a comedy, drama, you know, if it's about a particular area or so on, try and try and pitch it to the right people, try and get into mm -hmm. the room with the right companies that kind of make similar shows or that, you know, um, because the worst thing in the world is to have a project with a script development editor or something like that, where you two, where you're just not marrying, you yeah. know, you, you know. Yeah. This year's script writing competition, which uh -huh. yeah. has been um, organising, obviously we've been working with Channel 4 for the last two years, and you guys were part of the judging panel along with Lisa. Hello. Lisa Waters. Big round of applause, please, for yeah. Lisa. <laughs> Lisa's in drama development, and she also was one of the judges who judged on our scripts this year. So. Um, I won't get involved because he's fine. I'll ask Daniel and Marlon, how was the process for you? We were on the other end where we've done the writing and then we're waiting very nervously to see what, what, what people think. And so to, to come at it from a, the other way around, um, was this interesting? Because uh, you kind of get out of yourself. You know, it's almost like we were 
looking at it, uh, uh, you know, like a, a producer would, or, or you know, or a broadcaster, or, or something like that. So it was interesting in that perspective, uh, and also the scripts, uh, you know, were all of a really good quality. So they all had such a variety of ideas, yeah. and they all very well, the the ones that you know stood out or had really strong voices, um, which is always important. And I think it was, um, you know, it was really inspiring to see, uh, you know, the different ways in which people were using the screenplay format to, to get their ideas across. Yeah, a lot of them were almost could almost work as a like TV series. Yeah. Um, yeah. The film is very kind of that kind of thing. It's very focused. It's kind of like you know, you usually got your, your main character and, and those strands kind of come up, um, through that that person. Um, a lot of those, a lot of the scripts that we read, they were about various different people, and you know, um, but sometimes as well, <coughs> they were so uh, ambitious. And a few of them were written almost like, like novels. <coughs> um, and I think, think uh, yeah, in film scripts, it's very much kind of like story, story, story. And there were a few times where I was reading it where it's like, this is a really good story, but a lot of the action was so detailed and rich that it's kind of like your, your brain was going off in a, in a different direction. You know, and, uh, I'm not sure if anyone here submitted any scripts, but it's like, just, just keep focused, you know, I, I, we worked uh, quite closely with a really experienced writer called Roman Bennett and it was a great learning curve because he was just like, you know, make every scene count, you know, make, make sure every, every scene, word, yeah, every, every word, word is just, you know, pushing you it's forward, like, you know. And we still uh, do, in fact, we got a note about it the other day, that um, sometimes you will use three sentences to just say one thing, whereas one word will do, you know, and, and, and it, as long as it's uh, an impactful word, and uh, you, know, you know, that's the thing as well uh, 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 about writing. Sometimes you know it forces you to kind of go back to like your English classes and stuff like that. There are words in the English language uh, that are weighty enough uh, uh, and powerful enough to just say the one thing that you wanted to say, just one word. And, and I think, um, yeah, I think that is was. Uh, something that jumped out at us when we were reading the scripts. The ones that stood out for me in the whole bunch were the ones that, you know, in The Forty Elephants, which is one that won. One of their scene headings was uh, exterior, the usual spot. It kind of, and it was kind of like, where's the usual, usual spot? It's, but it was so unique to that story, you know, it's, it's a, it just, it, her voice was, sorry, it was, it was two of them, wasn't it? Right? Yes, it was the their voice, you could just yeah, no. feel their voice, you could just smell the authenticity of what they were. Right. Each of the scripts showed promise, and um, I've spoken to two of the writers, um, Louis, who wrote Trendy, mm -hmm. and you've already mentioned that there was, uh, you know, I, I could definitely see that being a TV series rather than mm -hmm. the film. There was so much, so many characters, and so much that he wanted to say, and it seemed very episodic. So um, I talked to him a bit about that and about how he might want to kind of explore that. But um, yeah, I think they're all doing the right things. They're entering competitions, getting their names out there. You know, talking about run, uh, you know, we were told, you know, don't worry, there'll be another series, and it, you know, a second series got commissioned in terms of the scripts, and you know, the show was well received, so it looked increasingly likely, and we spent a very long time writing the second series, or at least um, the first episode, and then kind of series five, or if you like, or outline for the others. And then, yeah, like Molly said, it was done, just like that. Sorry, it's not going to happen. And it's been yeah, almost, probably two years when, when it was said and done. Uh, that's not to even obviously include the first series. But yeah, two years on the second series, because we started it kind of when they finished the yeah, principal photography and it was being kind of edited. And uh, yeah, Sophie managed to get us uh, yeah, commission for a second series. But then, unfortunately, her bosses said no. With that particular one, it's such a shock that if you kind of stood still and thought about it, you could easily you know, go down a, a hole. Yeah. Um, I think it was just important to just keep going on, on that one. And, and yeah, so everyone kind of uh, survived after the death of the second series of, of Run. Um, and yeah, just as, as I was saying before, we kind of used it as a, we just went back to what we were doing and just like, let's just make this the best. But these other things that we're doing, the best that they could be. How do you know when it's right? Me and Dan get to a, to a stage where we're like, we really, really like this idea. Let's go and pitch it to 
to production company. And then once you give it to the production company, then you and that person, you're kind of in development. And then it's kind of like you guys as a group get it to a stage and it's like, okay, this is really, really good now. Um, we're going to go to the broadcast. It's kind of like, the, it, it kind of, it's hard to say, because it's never going to be perfect. It's hard to say yeah. when. It's never going to be 100%. You really got to put it through the mill, I think. Um, and by that, I mean, yeah, other people other than yourself that you trust, uh, uh, creatively in terms of their opinions, uh, give it to them, see what they feel, um, go back, redraft, and keep doing that until you feel you bind out all the, all the kinks, if you like. Uh, and, and then, only then, I'd submit. So, writing is a soul exercise most of the time, but when you have a group of people writing, how do you manage that, that, that experience in terms of um, the output? I think sometimes you need that kind of away time because you're, yeah, you're an artist know. and you kind of need that artistic freedom to be mm. alone and kind of just be like, okay, I'm going to just go now, you know? And we, when we're together, we do kind of hammer out a structure so right, of, of where, we're, where we're going. Yeah, a very general outline. But, you know, once you've got that outline, I guess as long as you get from this point to that point, in the middle, you kind of like things come to you, you know, things come to you yeah. whilst you're writing, and that's kind of what that alone time gives us. So that when we come back together, it's kind of like, oh wow, Dan did it like that. That's great. I didn't, I didn't think about that. Either. Yeah, and vice versa. It's really, really good. We you know, aim to surprise each other. Yeah, you know? yeah. That's that actually helps with the writing because, yeah. and like he thinks it's going to go like this, but and try to do something differently, not just for the sake of it, but just because you know yeah. you have a better idea. And then, yeah, we've you got know. very similar tastes as well, and that helps. Yeah. So that helps a lot. Yeah, I'd say if you're going to do it, you have to be on the same page as the person that you're going to work that closely. Because we never intended to write as a duo. Mm. We were actually writing separately, but then we did run together. And so we said, like, this officialize it, really. How have you found being able to still grow in your voice and write things that come authentically, but also in the back of your mind trying to avoid being known as, well, we're only going to let you write those stories? After writing, people were, you know, we'd go to, yeah. we'd go to pitch meetings and we'd have very different ideas and people would be surprised like oh well you know, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't expect that I didn't expect that from you though it's kind of like well you know this is this is what we do and I think uh, and I sometimes think, that worked and sometimes yeah. that didn't work yeah. you know, some people were willing to kind of go you know down a certain road with us because they didn't feel the project married mm. you know what we had done in run and who we were and stuff and, and that's not like you know we never took that person because at the end of the day it's a business and they have to kind of shop that and they have to get money for that and so if they're not convinced, then what, what's the point? So they're saving us time. I think if you are going to do something that's wildly uh, different or isn't what people expect, um, the one thing I think we found, uh, uh, I guess being working class, being black slash mixed race, um, is that um, people want to see some semblance of that in your work because, uh, I don't know, that's, you know, it's the same with, I guess, Women sometimes, are, you know, they've written a male character. Sometimes people want to say, well, what about the female perspective and so on and so forth. I think uh, you can place yourself in your work without being like so on the nose. Mm -hmm. So another thing that we really like to, to write about is, uh, is you know, otherness. But not necessarily in a, in, in a you know, obvious way. It could be otherness in terms of like, you know, you, you're the new girl in school and from a different area and outside uh, of the world. Yeah, like outside outside of the world. Yeah. it doesn't have to be, you know, uh, literally or you know, someone's being racist towards you because you have a different colour skin or you know, you, you can find other ways of uh, of putting that out there that, uh, that that you're happy with, but also I guess feed a need from from, from the people that you're gonna gonna make. It's that going back to the idea of just balancing between what it is you wanna do and what's kind of uh, out what is expected of you in a way. You know, when, with Lenny, when he sent him the script, did you send him like the whole, like the whole full episode? We kind of done a, a small thing. It's kind of like had his whole, his character's whole backstory, right. um, and just explaining who we were right. um, and why we written, run, where, why, why, why we're inspired to write it, mm -hmm. um, um, and just basically said to him, you know, this is the character um, we love you to to play him, mm -hmm. um, but. Again, it was kind of like just to give him kind of like a feel for what the show was, right. you know. Um, that I'm saying, like image was so it's so important. You know, if someone can see something tangible and be like, okay, I can I can get a taste for for, for this the mm -hmm. tone of the show and where they're going. Um, I think that kind of that, that helps helps a lot.
was it a strenuous process casting or was it kind of like a character building process on each characters whilst you're going through so much different people for one character? At the end of the day, we get like five or six kind of videos of like these are the people who, out of everyone that we're seeing, these are the people that we, we like that mm -hmm. we're into. What do you guys think? I mean, they, yeah. they did, they did, they did, uh, they took our word quite seriously, and, we're, and I think we were more involved than, than writers usually would be because we were so specific, like in the script, like when I was talking about the details that we put in and about you know, what this character actually does, who she is, mm -hmm. where she's from, and we had the pitch booklet and everything. Um, we were so specific about kind of what we were looking for that the casting director was, was really great actually, he kind of, kind of kept us yeah, involved. I'd like to know more about your pitch document for, for Run. It's important to have a section about your main characters, or, your, or, or at least one, you know, the, the lead, if you like, mm -hmm. the protagonist. And that's really important, mainly because a lot of our ideas, the story is intimately weaved into that character's life and you know what they're <coughs> doing. So you kind of, for us, you have to talk about the character. You've got to realise that the people that are going to be reading these documents, they probably read about 10, 15 of them every day. Mm. So you've got to kind of make it kind of fast and kind of engrossing. I think it's, there's a term Dan uses sometimes, more sizzle and less steak. You know? mm. <laughs> Got, it's got to be kind of exciting for them, you know, and you don't, and they don't, and the last thing they want to do is have something that's like really fit. I think once you get past like five or six pages, then you might have a little bit of a problem. Um, so you just, you just keep it like an, old, an overview of what the show is, characters, and then maybe just in, you know, very briefly what the series is going to be, you know, what the arc is, what your main character's kind of arc is. I think. Yeah. You don't or an episode be, one yeah. breakdown sometimes. That sometimes helps. that might help as well. Like a detailed yeah. episode one breakdown over like two pages. Yeah. Question, do you pretty much just work with established production companies? Is the question. <coughs> Second, is your main focus television? Um, or do you do film? Oh no, no, we, we, we film is kind of like, we're kind of like film geeks. So mm -hmm. it's kind of, film is the reason, it's the reason I, 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 I write. Mm. Um, but it's just TV, there's, uh, there's so much demand mm -hmm. for television content and particularly as a writer in, in this country, you know, the film industry is quite difficult yeah. to get a film off of the ground. Um, so it's just kind of natural just to almost just to keep, keep the, the lights in at home, mm -hmm. you know, to find um, a home in television. Um, we are just unbelievably lucky that the first thing that we ever did in television was our own show. Yeah, I mean, we're working on one film project at the moment, with film for actually, uh, Vanessa, and then the, everything else we're doing is television. Being that you guys obviously did full time jobs before you went into doing run, when did you get that transition to say that, okay, it's time to pack in this full time job kind of thing? It's February 17th, 2012. <laughs> 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 You're used to working a nine to five and always having your money at the end of the month. Now, uh, if you don't wake up in the morning and do something, you're, you're just not going to get paid. So it was, um, so that was very sad. It kind of, it was out of the frying pan into the fire in that respect. <clears throat> but it was still great to, because we had been working for so many years to get to that point. So, um, so yeah. Um, how do we know? Uh, they essentially said we're going to do the show and, and we're going to pay you to, to write all these episodes, and and you kind of need to leave your jobs if you're going to do it. So it was, it was, that's kind of the way it went. Um, I think that once, once you get like a green light on a, on a show, it's just, you're just down tools on everything. Mm. And it's kind of like that basically is your, is yeah. your life. It, it was a very scary time. It was, mm. it was frightening. Um, and you know, the people around you, I think they don't really kind of understand it. You know, you, my mum doesn't, she was like, you know, why are you going to quit your job for you? You know, yeah, a lot of people like, is, can't this you this just like work yeah, uh, part-time part -time yeah. as well? And, but yeah, because uh, there's not really an understanding of the level of commitment involved. Um, and also, like, you know, it's a bit of a, at the time, it's quite funny, so it's a bit of a shell shock for your colleagues because you're like, yeah, I've got to leave, I'm leaving. Like, I've basically <laughs> got to leave within the next couple of weeks. And they're like, yeah. why? Because you know, I've, I've just got a show commission, and it's kind of like, everyone, no one really kind of understands 
Um, or if they yeah. do, they go the other way and they're like, unless oh, you're rich beyond your wildest dreams. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, <they're cool. laughs> Essentially, what I'm interested in is this concept, which I think you've already touched on, of being in your writing, per se, um, and how far you can push that without necessarily just feeling like you're writing a Barbie cartoon mm -hmm. or something stupid. So how far are you willing to go out and then also take yourself out of it, per se, if, if that makes any sense? I think you always kind of have to in, invest yourself <coughs> in it or it will show on the, on the page, I think. You know, I, I, if you're not 100% invested in, in the work, you know, you've got to realise and think to yourself, if, if, I, if I start writing this, and it does get made, I'm pretty much going to be tied to this for at least the next two years. Um, so I don't think you can kind of distance yourself like that. I think you can take take other genres on as a, as a challenge and be like, you know, I think I can do this, but I, I just think you've always got to artistically invest yourself. How much could research replace this concept of my life or my experiences? Oh, okay. Well, I, I think as, uh, as much as you wanted to, really. I mean, in, uh, like, it, I think you can lean very heavily on research and, and research can be your guide through the story and, and it could have absolutely nothing to do with your personal experience in life. In fact, more often than not, that's probably how it be because most, most of us are just like boring, normal people who perhaps haven't, you know, done stupid, dangerous stuff and all that. Um, so, uh, you or maybe you might know someone who has, but, you know, uh, it might be different for yourself. So, uh, I think, um, yeah, I mean, uh, research the hell out of anything and uh, use that as your touchstone, your guide and, uh, and something to always return back to. Sometimes what research gives you is kind of like so small that you know just the, a colloquialism or something mm -hmm. like that that just authenticates what you're doing you know um, and when you do find those, those moments that's when it's, it's great because it's like oh wow I'm definitely putting that's, that's definitely going in. During the whole process what was a magic moment that you felt you made it? Well, when I say maybe, I mean like someone coming up to you and saying, oh, I saw the thing on TV, or maybe an actor, or, or a piece of writing, or you heard, you heard back your work. What was that? What was, that? was there a particular moment you thought, ah, oh, you know what? I think it was probably when, yeah, we got the phone call to say it was going to be, for me, sorry, it was going to be made. I think that was... <laughs> and then I had to go to my, my manager and say, I've got to go. <laughs> yeah, um, that was it, really, yeah. I think that for me, it's, it was more um, after it had all happened, and I went to get some chicken. It's like a little Bushman, there's a shop called Bushman in, in Brixton Market. Okay. And I was in there, and there was a guy just sitting there, and he was like, you wrote that show like, the, that it was based around there, London, and I was like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was good, man. It was good. And I don't know. That just like I, I, that I, got, I got kind of like a a, a, a moment of pride there. Yeah, I don't know. How long did run take? So you said you've been saying lots of years. Like how many years specifically? Um, sorry, get from production. It was two thousand and seven that we came up with the idea to do, you know, something that was originally online. So yeah, and then two thousand and thirteen it came on. Are you still working on your own projects that you're passionate about? There's a couple in there that are, mm. are ours. But I think even when someone kind of comes to you with something, mm. they're coming to you because they want you to put your kind yeah. of stamp on it. So you kind of, they've got like a small pitch, like a small idea, and it's kind of like we go away and come up with how we would do it. Mm. So it almost feels like it's, it is ours anyway. So the film that we're doing is an original idea from us. <coughs> uh, and then uh, you know, the BBC show someone else's idea, uh, and um, and then two other things are other people's ideas that we're adapting. Um, and then there's the, the other thing with Kudos, which is our idea. So, like generally speaking, yeah, I guess our original, original, original ideas are, are less, and there's more because they come from uh, there's more us working on other people's ideas because. You go to a meeting and someone says, we've got this, um, and uh, we're looking for someone to do something with it. We have agents. It. Yeah, we have agents, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, you kind of, yeah, you need an agent. <clears throat> you won't really um, get too far without one. Um, but uh, that's a process in itself, you know. Um, <laughs> but uh, but it's, it's different these days because you can self-generate your own uh, projects. 
to get um, agents interested. And there's, um, so you know, even if they don't take, if they, they don't take unsolicited uh, scripts, uh, you know, maybe we send them links and stuff like that. People are more inclined to kind of do that, you know, because everyone wants the next hot thing. And especially now that diversity is kind of like on, on everyone's tongue, and it won't be for forever. Uh, it's the flavor, you know, I, I don't mean that in a, in a horrible way, because things come and go, you know. Uh, but at the moment, it's very, and it will be on everyone's tongues for a while. Um, you know, now is a good time to, to to get your stuff out there because uh, people are going to want their diverse writers on their roster. You know? <laughs> that's that's it, a business. You the, need the, it. the great thing about today is, well, you know, in the old days when you would send out scripts to, to agents and so on, like, and you'd send it off into this, this into the never world, like, am I going to get a response back or not? But you know, I think people are more likely to watch something than you know sit down and, and, and have to trawl through loads and loads of pages. So you've got these mm. VMO and YouTube and all different kinds of things now. So yeah, definitely use those. Yeah. Thank you. What would be like the biggest piece of advice that you'd give to maybe a younger version of yourself or something that you wish you'd known? I would say to, so. to my younger self, stop putting so much pressure on yourself to make your first draft a masterpiece. I think if I could say to my other self, like, you know, try and write a play, you know, try and get into one of those theatre companies or something like that and just see it. Do you look more towards kind of production companies, like traditional ones, or do you, are you interested in stuff like online distribution, like Netflix? We were in, uh, you know, uh, we're just getting into screenwriting now. Uh, I definitely want to uh, get stuff that we've written or I've written, uh, filmed, and put on, on the internet, like uh, the nearest possible convenience, because uh, I think, uh, <coughs> you know, YouTube in particular, and Vimeo and stuff like that, they're just great ways of, of getting yourself seen. I mean, there is, because everyone can do it, it means there's a lot of people out there, so you really have to be unique in some way. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you.